Um, Here we are with the wonderful Anna Blackwell, uh, who has been uh, travelling quite a lot solo. Which we're going to have a chat about solo travel today. So we know lots of uh, people who come to us and ask us questions. It's generally about solo travel, and so we wanted to make a video uh, with Anna, in particular, who's done a lot of solo travelling, and talk about the pros and cons, what it's like, and kind of group travel as well. So to kick things off, let's have a quick overview of your solo travel ex expeditions, exploits. So. My first big solo trip was when I was 18. Um, I spent really? three so months young. backpacking. Yeah, I was, yeah. Um, was I young? I, I feel I like I'd, I'd done I'm some travelling before then, so I didn't feel that young. Yeah. Classic 18 year old. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an adult. Um, but so when I was 18, I spent three months backpacking around Italy by myself. Wow. Um, okay, great. Then the other sort of big solo things I've done, I've walked a thousand miles across France and Spain by myself and uh, I've done a five week solo trek across the wilderness of Arctic Sweden by myself. So you are a well seasoned <laughs> solo, traveler. Uh, solo traveller yeah. of many years. So for you, when you're, um, you know, out on your own, what are, the, what are the pros of just going away on, on your own? So I love the self sufficiency of it and being able to well first of all take care of myself fully having everything that I need like in my rucksack yeah. um, but also it's when you travel by yourself you're sort of forced into meeting people and putting yourself out there and you can't you can't be lazy in the same way whereas like if you're traveling with a group you know yeah. you've got each other and you can just hang out with those people yeah. um, if you go off by yourself like you have to make the effort and yeah. A consequence of that is that you get to meet some really, really awesome people. So um, this is a big positive. Like, lots yeah. of people would be scared, I think. Right? Yeah, no, but it's actually, definitely. It's, this is a, a big pro. Yeah, and it can be nerve wracking going off and like putting yourself out there like that. Yeah. But from my experience, it always works out for the best. And just quickly, you've you've done some group travel as I have, well. Yes. And what was the benefit? So, just to be, I'm not being very clear, but so you were joined a group trip, but you were on your own yeah. and joined a group. So, what was, yeah. what was that? So, that's kind of solo travel then within a group. Yeah, so I went out, the trip that I was on was um, going up Mount Tubkal, which is the highest mountain in North Africa, in Morocco, um, and then a sort of road trip through Morocco and a camel trek in the Sahara, Wonderful. which was absolutely dreamy. Um, but I went out, I joined this group by myself. It was something I'd booked online at home. Yeah. Um, what made you book it? Was it just want to go do something? Yeah, I wanted, so I was working, I was working at a law firm at the time, yeah. um, had a proper conventional job, yeah. um, and I wanted an adventurous holiday but I didn't have the time to sort of plan my own adventure yeah. like I had done previously. Like most so, people, <laughs> no, yes. Um, so it was, it was convenient and it kind of ticked the boxes, it was quite cheap, it was yeah, cost, cost effective way of doing it, yeah. um, but I would meet people out there and I was, wasn't going to be yeah. by myself <laughs> in, in North Africa. So, 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 so basically you got, so you got, uh, you were a solo traveller, you went on a group trip, you got an adventure, and then what was it like actually with the group? Oh, it was go? fantastic. So we, I remember everyone walking out of the airport, and we were kind of looking for the guy with the sign of our group yeah. name, um, and everyone was a little bit nervous to start with, yeah. and there were uh, three of us who had all come solo, and then there was a group of three, and then two guys as well. Um, so we were kind of a mismatch, yeah. sort of different different groups and solo travellers, and everyone was a little bit nervous to start with, kind of like, hi, I'm, I'm Anna, I'm from England, yeah. from Oxford. Um, and then within about 10 minutes of being on the minibus, everyone was just chattering non-stop. And from then on, it was absolutely fantastic. We just got on so, so well. Um, and we were doing, so we were doing this trek, we were going up a 4,000 metre mountain, yeah. which is like quite hard work, yeah. and you want to be, with a group who'll be patient and supportive if you're struggling and help motivate you and they absolutely were, the people that I did it with were so lovely um, and just had a fantastic time. And it's the, I, cause I, I often, we get lots of questions about the group travel but I think the, when you're travelling with the group, that's more, the, that's the, the norm. Typically, like groups all get on and it's great fun Yeah. And you meet lots of people. Um, and did you get any friends for life out of the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Most of us are still in touch. We've got a really? group WhatsApp going, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> this is a few years later. It's really great, isn't it? Um, so, um, if, if you got any advice for anyone who's kind of who, who is now in the position you were when you went on the Morocco trip, who really fancies doing something, but is maybe a little bit apprehensive of going on their own. Yeah, well, group, group trips like this are a fantastic way to sort of 
enter into the world of adventurous travel or like seeing new places where you wouldn't go by yourself and even if you're looking at going with a friend as well um, because everything is sort of set up there are people there who will like look after you while still giving you sort of a bit of free reign so you can have fun yeah, yeah. Um, so I think just like if it's if it's the the prospect of being with a group of people that you don't know it's actually uh, that can be so so much fun and it's not something to be too scared of it's a fantastic opportunity yeah. to meet people from other parts of the world to be honest not, not just from from the UK um, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's all about the people. It is. It's all about the yeah. people. Um, and we, so, so most uh, customers who get in touch with us uh, about solo travel are women. And I think, is there more concerns if you're, you know, if you're a woman traveling on your own, I suppose is the, the kind of obvious question is, oh my God, you'll be all right, blah, blah, blah. What do you think? So I've, I always have people saying, oh, surely you can't do that by yourself <laughs> as a young woman, like mm. you're far more vulnerable. Um, from my experience, traveling solo as a young woman, more people just want to look out for you. They want to make sure that you are okay, you know what you're doing, where you're going, things like that. And they will keep an eye on you far more than like if you are with yeah. a group or if you're a like burly bloke traveling. Yeah. Um, so actually it's totally worked out in my favor. The amount of free food that I have got, <laughs> and I'm, I'm a big food person. Um, <laughs> and I, yeah, I get so many people being generous and even if it's like, offering for me to sleep on a sofa or sleep yeah. in a tent in their garden. Um, really nice. Yeah. Really so, yeah. part of the part of the experience and nothing really to nothing really to worry about actually. Yeah. It's been fine. Yeah. Great. So um, thank you for coming in. No problem. And giving us your wisdom <laughs> and your experiences and sharing with us. Um, as I say, uh, please do check out Anna's website on annablackworld.co.uk all the latest information and upcoming expeditions to Africa and to the Arctic and um, hopefully you'll see Anna again on our channel in the not too distant future if we can persuade Anna to come <laughs> back one day. Um, thank you very much.